right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning briefing here on Friedman Adventures. It is so great to be with you all on this beautiful Wednesday morning. The sun is just coming up, and although I left my tripod back at the 22nd Street Landing Studio from a great podcast last night, I've got my surf fishing stake in the ground of my camera right there. I don't know, it looks very tenuous, like it could fall at any moment. So hopefully I'll get through the morning briefing with you all. Wow, what a show last night. And we've got a really incredible, a lot of information to get across to you here this morning. But what a show with Moon and Brian Wynn. They were fantastic. We went for two and a half hours, answered just so many great questions from the Friedman Adventures family. Brian gave away a tackle pack. Israel de la Cruz won it. It was just a night to remember. Fantastic. Go back and watch it. If you want to learn about fishing, you want to hear about Moon's rod wrapping, it is a great show. Thanks to our two awesome guests last night. So I am so happy that we were able to do that. And also, Brian Burrell. We did a short segment with him on why bluefin tuna fishing is so special to him. In fact, here's a little piece of that right now. Brian, it's good to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm tired, oh. but I'm well. I'm tired, too. You know, I thought you were just walking by. You're heading home. I don't know what you're doing tomorrow. You might be going tuna fishing, I hear, but you've been out tuna fishing a lot. We're seeing them everywhere, but they're reluctant to bite. Are you finding the same thing? Uh. Hearing what I'm hearing the oh. last couple days. Oh, man. well, that's... been biting. All right, man. let's hear it. Guys, if you haven't got a chance to go out and experience this bluefin tuna fishing that we've had for the last seven years, uh, you're really missing it. <laughs> we have long-range type fishing, long-range style fishing right here in our backyard. And who knows how long you it's going to last. Catch, you can catch a 20-pounder. You can catch a 300-pounder right in our backyard. You never know what you're going to hook. The fish are everywhere. Uh, they biting at night. They biting in the day. They biting the troll nowadays. They, and, and it's been the type of fishing where... We're learning as we go what these things are doing. They, oh, a 300, this man needs I a 300 need, pound a, tuna. I need a 300 pounder. <laughs> Get him a tuna before he cries. You gotta love Brian. He is so enthusiastic about fishing. After all these years, he hasn't lost his enthusiasm. You can watch that entire show right now. Go back and take a, take a listen to the entire show with Brian. It was a good one. All right, my friends, let's get into it. And now we are starting to talk about an area of kelp paddy fish that many boats are fishing. First of all, Dan and Ensenada, those guys, the Pongeros, my good friends down there, are still hammering away at some bluefin tuna on the Mad Mac lures. Trolling around has been producing excellent fishing, no question about it. But also, they've got that kelp paddy action, and the kelp paddy action right now is as good as it gets. You can't wait much longer. By the way, August the 19th, we're on the Malahini out of San Diego. We're leaving at 6 a.m., returning at 6 p.m. If you go in the show description, you can click on the link and book. Right now, this is going to be a good one, and we deserve it because I've had some slow trips this year, and it sounds like we're off to the races. So Ensenada going very, very well up to San Diego. Those guys and L.A. Orange County base boats are now on the kelps and they're all getting fish. I mean, it is tremendous. And there's kelps down the Baja Coast, down there below Ensenada. It's really, really good. And up on this side of the border in U.S. waters, it's really, really good. Thunderbird proved that a few days ago and now everybody is getting a piece of it. And hopefully we're gonna see this action continue into the fall. I have no reason to believe it's not going to. What a fall it's gonna be. My albacore prediction, but uh, we still have a little time on that, but it's not looking real good, but who cares? I'm with all the guys who say, hey, screw your albacore prediction. Look what we have right here right now, and we have some really awesome fishing going on, and I don't see this slowing down at all. Take the Amigo, for example. The Amigo on a two-day trip. My friend Pete June chartered the boat. I got to see Pete last night. It was really good. Pete, all my best to you. It was so nice to see you, my friend. 
and your son, you guys both fishing together, that warms my heart. So the Amigo runs all the way down to the border and they end up with over 100 yellowtail, in fact, 105 yellowtail, and they were sitting really good on the fish down in that neck of the woods. 11 Dorado, over 100 yellows, and Pete said, hey, any chance, he's talking to Mike, Mark Pizzano Jr., we go up and fish that bluefin at night, and they're talking about a run to Santa Barbara Island. I mean, you're down on the border, and now you're gonna run there? And what do you think Mark Pizzano Jr. said? Heck yeah, let's go. So up they went, and they had a nice little chew on the bigger bluefin tuna, nine bluefin tuna. Big fish were up to around 200 pounds. They had two of those pizza. It was absolutely a dream trip. It couldn't have gotten any better. And on that trip, I saw my friend Mark Sonata, who's a deckhand on board the Amigo. I love Mark. Got to get a nice, big, warm hug from him last night. I haven't seen him for a while, so it was nice to see him. And Mark told me, that they had a mako shark come up that mauled that tuna. He's never seen one that big before. He said it was every bit of 1,000 pounds. Here's a little bit of that video. Oh, Holy shit. Get out of here. Oh, you're good, sorry. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my 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 gosh. Don't gaff the mako. Oh, I wasn't gonna gaffle me. Holy oh, shit. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Holy was, shit. Yeah. That was a thousand pounds. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh my god. Crazy stuff. I'm telling you. Really, really crazy. Guys were blown away by the size of that Mako shark. It was really, really incredible. Um, other guys that are running down there, Fury, 131 on the Yellowtail, 16 Dorado, San Diego out of Seaforth with 84 Yellowtail, 10 to 15 pound stuff for the most part on these kelps, some of it bigger, some of it smaller, six Dorado and a bluefin tuna. On the San Diego, they said they saw a lot of bluefin tuna wandering around. So in the midst of all of this, you still have a shot at those bluefin tuna. That's pretty impressive also. Pacific Islander limits a yellowtail, 61 Dorado. Those flatheads are starting to settle in. They're starting to acclimate. They're starting to bite. Thunderbird with 155 yellowtail, 16 Dorado. And I'm leaving out many boats because it's redundant at this point, but many boats with limits or near limits of yellowtail, a good shot on the Dorado and also seeing more and more yellow fin tuna. Now down below the Ranger 85, had 20 plus on the yellowfin tuna. I talked to Scott Buchert, who was on the boat as a deckhand. Scott's a great kid. And Scott told me that most of that yellowfin tuna is on the smaller side, like that eight to 12 pound class, some of it even smaller than that. But we're seeing more and more of it move up. Hopefully there'll be some bigger stuff mixed up with it. And it just adds to the smorgasbord that we are looking at right now. It is really, really incredible. All right. so. I know that on one of the foamers that the Amigo rolled up on, I'm talking Bluefin now, up near Santa Barbara Island, one of the guys tossed a Colt Sniper out there and got bit. So we know that's working really well. Back to the kelp patties, and that is gonna be a bite where you're fishing bait with 30 to 40 pound, 40 is working, good fluorocarbon, www.opsinusa.com. That's working good, choosing a good hot bait really is important in most cases, but I have to be perfectly candid with you. It's so freaking wide open on many of these kelps right now that you can get bit, you know, with a bait that you stomped on and sat and dried out in the sun. And while I'm being facetious, it gets pretty crazy on a lot of these kelps right now. Incidentally, I think two spots, maybe four, on our Amigo trip leaving. It's a two-day trip. August the 31st, you tell me that's not gonna be a great trip. At that point in time, we may not have to run that far down south, and we should be able to get a piece of both species. I'm talking kelp patty, variety, big blue fin tuna. Uh, you just don't know at this point in time, but it's looking pretty doggone exciting. Make sure you're still bringing your heavy tackle if you have it, please. You don't know when you're gonna bump into that 200 pound stuff, and certainly the stuff the Amigo was into was up to that size. That's what Pete June told me who chartered the boat, said they had two. 200 pounders, gorgeous fish, and it is biting really, really well. And of course, you want to bring your heavier type jigs also. 
but don't use a 500 gram jig when there's no current and no issue about that. Go to the 200 gram. If you don't have current, you don't need to go that big and that'll work really good if you're nighttime fishing, okay? So if you're on a day and a half trip and there's one pulling out of 22nd Street Landing this morning, we wish the Pride all the very, very best. We have two two-day trips on the Pride, September and October. Uh, they're almost full, but if you want to join us, there's a few spots left. Um, those guys are going to leave. If you're on an overnight or, or, or if you're on a day and a half or a two-day trip, you're fishing at night, bring some of that heavy tackle. You are going to need it. So what can I say? It's absolutely incredible right now. The kelp patty fishing is off the hook. The bluefin are starting to settle in and bite a little bit better. Heck, the Endeavor up there out of Ventura sword fishing had a dozen fish fishing out there near Santa Barbara. And tell me about it. Those guys in the Channel Island are blessed at Ventura sword fishing. Cisco's and all those guys. They have had the most incredible white sea bass season. You put the wind aside and they would have been catching sea bass every single day. They have copious amounts of rockfish up there to fill the sacks. And now they've got these big bluefin tuna in range. It's freaking incredible fishing that is going on right now. You cannot beat it. So really great stuff. I can't believe how good the fishing is right now. And you should take advantage of it. If you get a chance, now is the time to do it. The kelp patty stuff off the hook. More and more bluefin, yellowfin moving up. We got a big south swell. All of it just coming together beautifully for an outstanding late summer and what I think is going to be an now off the hook fall. All right, let me take you down to Todos Santos Island and tell you there's still barracuda around there, some yellowtail. I mean, I'm almost starting to brush over most of the islands now because everybody's going to focus on this stuff. Up there at San Clemente Island, sea lions are driving everybody crazy. There's yellows there and good calico bass fishing. No question about it. You can end up with 12, 15 yellows on an overnight trip to San Clemente Island. Many of the overnight boats, Freedom last night, he's Cal Patty hopping this morning. They're all gonna get on this now. It's just way too enticing and way too good. Tino Valentine, or I don't know if Tino was running the boat. I didn't see our podcast went two and a half hours, but whoever's on there, either Trevor or Tino, they're gonna get some fish today. I can't wait to hear that. It should be really, really good. Uh, Catalina Island, scratchy. It's been that way all year. You catch a Bonita full speed once in a while, then they don't want to bite. A couple of yellows every once in a while. Uh, you get uh, okay bass fishing with a few legal bass, mostly short bass. It's been that kind of a bite. Some barracuda also at Catalina Island. But going to and fro the island, you can encounter a kelp loaded with Dorado. There is plenty of Dorado up here. They haven't been biting that well, but there are plenty of Dorado on the kelps right here sometimes you have to drop down to the lighter line to get a bite guys we're dropping down to 12 pound to get a bite but in most cases you're going to get a shot at some kelp patty dorado or big bluefin or you know decent size bluefin tuna going to and fro the island that is something that is occurring with many many boats right now so keep that in mind as we move you up to santa barbara san nicholas island I don't know what to tell you. Now we got bluefin tuna in the mix. It was sea bass, and there are, I know some private guys who've had some sea bass scores there, but a lot of guys are fishing that bluefin now. Uh, private boaters are out there trolling Mad Mac lures around the Osborne Bank and doing pretty darn well. It's impressive what's going on in that neck of the woods also. And uh, the Channel Islands in general, as we move in to the other islands, Anacapa and uh, Cruz and all that area, uh, some decent uh, barracuda fishing at times, decent calico bass fishing, copious amounts of rockfish. It is still really, really good. Along the coast, um, really, really excellent signal of barracuda down there off Ensenada, up there around San Diego, still picking at some sand bass and that kind of a thing, moving you up. Dana, short calico bass, but some legals also, a little bit of barracuda bouncing around there. Also, kelp patties holding Dorado not that far away. That's going to be a half day boat thing this year up here in the Long Beach area. More and more bass trying to bite conditions. That's been the problem all year long. When you have poor conditions, fish don't want to bite. On a private charter, uh, we were out the other day, I reported on that already to you. We had all kinds of trouble the first part of our trip. And then at the end, we had excellent bass fishing up there around Point Furman. Calicos were raining on for us. 
it was good. A, a lot of shorts, however, but still a lot of action. A couple short white sea bass up there. Redondo boats, Marina del Rey boats, a few bass. At times, pretty good on the bass, but a lot of rockfish up there out of Ventura. Cody Rogers on the Island Spirit has been catching uh, a few barracuda. He's had his problems with conditions here recently, but we've also seen some good barracuda fishing on the surface iron. Nothing wrong with that as they continue to poke away at that, catch rockfish. Up there in Santa Barbara, we continue to see good rock fishing for the boats out of sea landing in Santa Barbara. Not bad at all. Albacore up there off Fort Bragg, nothing down this way. Still no Albi, but we're getting to the point also and agreeing with most of you that who cares, man? I mean, we have got such a great scenario. And on the surf, we continue to see some really excellent fishing going on for Corvina. Uh, there's good yellowfin and croaker fishing, a few halibut as we've just come off a grunion run, and also uh, we're seeing a few spot fin croaker. That'll be a fall thing. We'll see more and more of that. So, man, I don't know what to tell you. It is good right now. I highly recommend you go back and listen to night, last night's podcast. I think you'll learn a lot and enjoy our two guests. They were so much fun. I thank Darren Dohe. Darren showed up uh, at dinner with us before the show and also was part of our student audience. Anthony Amalfitano. Thank you, Anthony. He was part of our student, of our studio audience. And I usually go for a walk. I do about a three or four or five mile walk before the show. I was out walking along. Some guy goes, hey, are you Phil Friedman? I just watched the morning briefing. Great guy, Jason. Thank you, Jason. That means a lot to me. It really, really does. All right, folks, we got three charters coming up. Oh, well, we've got August 19th. It's a Friday. If I'm wrong, yeah, I think it's the 19th, but it's a Friday, August 19th, Malahini. Then we jump on the Amigo for a beautiful two-day trip. It's going to be phenomenal, August 31st. And then we have a couple of two-day trips on the Pride. All of those shows are in our show description. Take a look, send me a text, and get on before it's too late. All right, thank you so much, everybody. It's always a pleasure to be with you. My phone is not falling. It's hanging in there. I made it through another one without my tripod. I thank you all very, very much for joining us. And I will see you again. Woo!